Hey everyone, and welcome to the Avid 4 exercise. In today's video, we will sync footage in Pluralize and then build a documentary sound bed. So let's get right into it. The first thing that we're going to do is go to the doc and open the Avid Nexus Client Manager. This is the first thing that you'll be doing, and I'm sure this is routine. We're going to double click Nexus 4 and log in with our credentials, access ID as the user, and your first name, capital first initial lowercase for the rest, as the password. We're going to mount all our workspaces by double-clicking each title. Then we're going to minimize Avid Nexus Client Manager. And now, let's double-click the Avid Exercises workspace on the desktop so we open up a Finder window directly to that workspace. We're going to navigate to Avid Exercises, Avid 4, and media. Let's go to the video folder and we're going to preview this file right here. I'm going to click it once and press the space bar. Camera rolling. Scene one, take one. I am associated with the DALI because in 1976. You can press space bar or hit the X to close that file out. And it looks like all of this is documentary interview footage. For the next Avid exercises, we're going to edit a snippet from a documentary on Dally in the Alley, an annual local event hosted right here in Midtown Detroit. Unfortunately, the audio is less than stellar. There's a significant hiss that rivals the subject's voice. This audio came straight from the camera microphone, which is generally low quality. So instead, let's check out the files in the audio folder. We're going to listen to audio that was captured with a lavalier microphone instead of the camera audio. We're going to click Bono001.wave once and then press spacebar to preview it. Hello. I am associated with the DALI because in 1976... Wow, that's such a full sound, and the noise is so quiet in the background. This is why we use secondary audio capture with high-quality microphones, like using a Zoom H4n and a lavalier mic. But, and here's the question, how do we get this footage to align because they're in two separate files? This is where the fun begins. We're going to move this window aside and we're going to go to the dock and we're going to open Pluralize 4. Pluralize is an awesome program that analyzes and synchronizes video with secondary audio in large batches. This is incredibly convenient for filmmakers without access to advanced time code sync devices. If your Pluralize doesn't open immediately to this window, grab a local mayor staff and they can help you out. This is a school license that we're using and sometimes it glitches out. We're going to add media and as it says, we're going to drop media files here. Since we have our finder window open, we're going to go to the video folder and select all of these. Then we're going to drag and drop them into Pluralize. Then we're going to go to the audio folder. We're only going to select the first five tracks that are numbered. We're not going to sync the room tone because there isn't a matching video for the room tone audio clip. After we select the files, we're going to click and drag them into the Pluralize window. And this is one of the most important steps. We're going to right click or control click in the audio recorder one track. And we're going to uncheck allow sync to split track. I'm not going to go into very many details, but this saves a lot of heartache later down the road. With everything ready to synchronize, we're going to press synchronize. It'll make a nice pleasant beep when it synchronizes, and we can see that everything is blue. If you have tracks that aren't synchronizing, they'll show up as red. That's a sign that you may not have audio to match the video, video to match the audio, or the audio and video just might not be captured well enough to have waveforms that can be analyzed well. Now that we have our clip synchronized, we're going to export this timeline. The export timeline dialog opens up. Over where we save to save to folder, we'll click Pluralize Video Export. We're going to go to FPA Com followed by our computer. Go to your personal workspace. Avid Exercises. And oh, there's no Avid 4 folder. That's because from here on out, we're going to be making our own folders. 
we're going to press new folder and we're going to title this one habit four and then we're going to create another folder and we're going to title this one sync make sure that the sync folder is inside of the avid four folder we're going to hit select we're going to choose the export format we want to make sure these are video files but just so you know if you do edit in premiere davinci or final cut pro you can export directly into those nles since avid is divorced from pluralize we have to unfortunately export as video files then link them inside of avid now that that's done we're going to click export while pluralize is exporting now is the perfect time to offer some advice for audio for pluralize and syncing to work it's important that your camera is recording audio if you have the option to turn it off make sure that it is set to on when you record camera audio for the purpose of syncing this is called scratch audio next a large single clap or the use of a slate which is a very critical filmmaking tool will make syncing way easier the spike in the audio from clapping allows Pluralize or other programs to easily synchronize tracks. The spike also allows you to visually sync tracks in a timeline if sync programs aren't available to you. Finally, starting and stopping your video and audio recorders at the same time helps reduce bloated file sizes and prevents programs from syncing to stray noises after you yell cut on set. All right, perfect. We have a window popping up showing our synced files. And so let's preview just to see how it looked. We're going to select this by clicking it once and press spacebar. My name is Sue Blau. I am associated with the DAWI because in my... Most excellent. Everything is perfect. We have the good video and the good audio. So we're going to do one more thing. Pluralize likes to add a lot of extra cable at the end of file names, and so we need to correct that. With the file selected, we can click on the title again, and it should open up a dialog box to edit it. We're going to press the right arrow key and move it to the end, and we're going to backspace. We're going to title this one clip1.mp4, and then press enter. We're going to do the same thing with this one, but here's another way to do that. You can right click or control click and select rename. Clip 2. Keep in mind that there has to be a delay between clicking and clicking again, otherwise you might just open up the file. We'll name this one Clip 3. This one is clip four. And then we have clip five. Looking good. I'm going to close this finder window and this finder window. And we are done with Pluralize 4. So we can hit Command Q. We're not going to save this project because we already have the exported files. Sometimes it'll give you an error report because we hit command Q, so we're just gonna ignore that. And now we're ready to open Avid Media Composer. All right, and with Avid open, the first thing we always do is go to user profile, click the drop down, and then import user. We're gonna go to FPACOM followed by our computer, Avid Exercises, user profile, and MA student, click open. Now we have the student standard workspace available. We're going to go to new project because we're creating a new one. We're going to name this one. We're going to rename this one last name added for. So your last name. We're going to select the format. It's going to be HT1080. 1080p 23976. Most importantly, we have to select the file location. The default location is in Documents in Avid Projects, and that's not your personal workspace, so you could lose that. 
So we're going to change that to FPACOM, your personal workspace, Avid Exercises, and Avid 4 in the folder that we just created earlier. Then click Open. Now we're ready to hit Create on the project. First thing we're going to do is open the student standard workspace and then we have to create our bins. We're going to click the title of this one so we can rename it and it's going to be sequences. We're going to be making quite a few bins right now to prepare for the rest of the project so get ready to type. Command N for a new bin. This one's going to be video. Command N again. We're going to title this bin audio. Command N for a new bin. We're going to title this one Sync. Command N for you guessed it, another bin. We're going to title this one B roll. Command N once again, and this bin is going to be titled Titles. Another bin with Command N, and this one will be titled Graphics. And then another bin with command M. This one will be titled stills. And for the final bin, it's going to be called music. As it stands, this is a lot of bins. Sometimes you'll be dealing with a lot more bins in more advanced projects. Avid's default for organization is in alphabetical order. And so we have A, B, and so on and so forth. This makes it a little bit of a hairy mess because your video's at the bottom, your audio's at the top, and your sequences are right here in the middle. You want to fix that? Well, we can sort of cheat the system. We can click the title of sequences to edit it, move the cursor to the beginning, and add a 0, 1, and an underscore at the beginning. And now it's at the top which is perfect and handy, so you can use this to set a custom order apart from al alphabetical. I could do this as well with video and make this 02 and sync could be 03 and so on and so forth. This is an exercise, so if you'd like to do that, feel free to. If not, I'll keep this just the way it is because that's fine with me. And now let's link our files. We're going to go to the source browser using the left sidebar. We're going to go to the Avid Exercises workspace, enter the Avid Exercises folder, Avid 4, Media, and Video. We're going to select all the clips. We're going to make sure that they're linked and select the target bin as video. We're going to link, then we're going to go to audio, we're going to select all of the clips, make sure they're linked, go to audio, and hit link again. It's going to prompt with the start time options, and we're going to select the frame rate, which is 23.98, and hit OK to all. So this might feel redundant because there's already a sync footage with both the good audio and the good video, but this made good practice for linking media. Now let's grab the synced footage that we made earlier in Pluralize. So we're going to go to our personal workspace now, go to Avid Exercises, Avid 4, go to the sync folder. Now here are our synced clips. We're going to make sure they're linked. The target bin will be the sync bin. And then we're going to click link. Now that we have everything linked, we're going to go back to bins and we're going to double check that everything is good. We have the video files, the synced files, and the audio files. Now let's go to the sequences bin, right click or control click, and create a new sequence. This one's going to be titled, Your Last Name, Avid 4. So let's double click the bin icon for the sync bin, 
and then let's double click name to reorder it from lowest to highest. And now let's load up clip three. Before we build the sequence, I need to briefly discuss how I will be doing it because it is not the way that you will be editing your documentary projects down the road. This is an already completed documentary and I have a list with all the clips and timestamps that I'll be following closely to build my sequence. This is not like building a sequence traditionally, where I parse through the clips, take notes on good lines, and piece together a compelling story based on my footage. This is called paper editing, and that would take hours. And while I know you love spending time here at the mayor, I don't want to waste it. You see, a documentary is a form of storytelling where you seek out interesting people, places, history, and objects, and strive to capture footage that reflects the story you envision as a director. What is that story? That is a continuously flowing idea that you carry from the development to the premiere. You could go out seeking to tell a story about an outlandish zoo owner and end up uncovering a national animal controversy. But here's the kicker. Always remember that your story must convincingly evoke an emotion from your audience. It could be outrage from secrets uncovered, hope in a brighter future, bitter sweetness from a battle still fought today. A documentary is a story, and as a documentarian, you are a storyteller. Today, for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to build a pre-arranged story, but then I will explain the decisions behind that story arrangement so you can translate those techniques into your documentaries. So let's get to it. To make sure that we're all on the same page, we're going to go into the top right, right over here in the tracking information menu of the source monitor. We're going to click that and go to source track V1 TC1 and make sure it's followed by four sets of zeros. And now we can both know for a fact that the time code in the top right of the source monitor exactly reflects where the marker is in the clip all the way down to the frame. For clip three, we're gonna start this at 5601. You can use the arrow keys to get precisely where you need to get to. We're gonna press I to place the in marker. And then this clip is going to end at 010312, a minute, three seconds, and 12 frames. then press O to place the out marker. And then we're going to make sure that everything is still routed correctly. We have the V1 track activated, V1 track activated, A1 and A1, both of them activated, and everything is routed correctly. So let's splice in. Excellent. Now before we keep splicing more things in, I'm just going to zoom out. This is my personal preference so that I can see everything in the timeline as I edit it. And now, Inside the sync bin, let's open up clip one. For the endpoint, we're going to set that at 13 seconds and 15 frames. So 13, 15. Press I to place the end marker. And then that's going to end at 33 seconds and 4 frames, so 3304. Press O for the out marker. Make sure the marker is at the end of the sequence. Press V to splice in. Let's zoom out one more time. Perfect. Now let's go to clip two. And we're going to go to 51, 22. 51 seconds, 22 frames. Press the I key to place the in marker. Then we're gonna go all the way to a minute, 25 seconds, and four frames, 0, 1, 2, 5, 0, 4. Press O to set the out point. Press V to splice in. And now let's go to clip four. In clip four, we're gonna start at 18 seconds, three frames, 
press I to make an end marker. Then we're going to go all the way to 23 seconds flat. So 23, zero, zero. Press O to set the out point. And then we're going to hit V to splice it again. Now, I'm being a tiny bit careless. I'm not making sure everything's routed because I'm just splicing everything in subsequently. I'm not hopping in and out of this project. But for future reference, it's always a good idea to ensure that you're properly routed. I'm going to zoom out again. Now, let's go back to clip 3. We have markers here, so let's clear them out. We're going to press the G key to clear the markers. This one is going to start at 022816, 2 minutes, 28 seconds, and 16 frames. There we go. Press I to set the end marker. That one's going to go to 2 minutes, 45 seconds, 1 frame, 024501. Press O to set the out marker. Then V to splice in. Now to clip 5. This one we're going to start at 2 minutes, 1 second, 22 frames, or 020122. Press I to set the end marker. Then this one's going to end at 021214. Press O to set the out marker, and then V to splice in. And now we're going to hit G in the source browser so that we can clear the markers again. And we're going to go to 2 minutes, 31 seconds, 8 frames, 023108. Press I to set the end marker. Now let's go all the way to 025710. Set the out marker with O, and then V to splice in. Now that we have all the clips spliced in, we're going to clear out any filler words. Words like um, uh, eh. These are very common occurrences in regular conversation, but unfortunately this is frowned upon in most mass media. You may not have noticed, but professional documentaries do not contain ums, uhs, incomplete sentences, long pauses in dictation, Unless it's a stylistic decision, airtime is precious, and our films must be polished. This is why we cut out the filler words like um and ah. Uh. Luckily for us, I already have identified those. We're going to move our marker to the beginning of clip 2, and then we're going to zoom in a little bit, and then we're going to open the track control panel. We're going to activate waveforms, just so we can accurately see everything, and just to be safe, We'll activate the volume in case we decide to use keyframes down the road. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm having a hard time seeing these waveforms, so I want to make the tracks a little larger. I'm going to use Command L as the shortcut to enlarge the tracks. That looks a lot better, and I'm having a much easier time seeing everything. I can also shrink them back down if I want with Command K. Let's keep it like this. I'm going to let it play out so you can hear the pause and what we're going to fix. The Dali started at, in 1977 as a... She pauses before she says the date, and we'd like to fix that. And so you can hold Shift and then click in the timeline position bar, and you can hear what's going on in the timeline as you scrub through. I want to catch her right before she says, at. The dolly started at, 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 at. Right there. 
With the marker here and with all the tracks activated, I'm going to press Y to add an edit. Nice. And now I want to catch her right before she says in 1977. Oh, I can't hear anything unless I hold shift before I click. So right before she says in, now I'm going to press the Y key again to make an edit. And now, with these two edits, we've turned one clip into three. I'm going to select the middle clip that we just created with these edits. And then I'm going to press the T key to place marks around the selection. And I'm going to press the Extract button to extract them. Now it should hopefully sound like she said it herself. The dally started in 1977 as a... A little bit of a pause, but we can fix that. We're going to place the marker on the cut, and we're going to add a quick transition. We're going to make sure that it only applies to A1, because this isn't a video transition. And then we can make it four frames long, starting two frames out. This is an infinitesimal amount of a second, but this is going to allow the waveforms to ramp down and ramp up so there's no pop, as you just heard. We're going to set the render to our last name workspace, and we're going to make this a film fade. Add and render. Now let's move the marker to the beginning of the clip and hear what it sounds like. The dally started in 1977 as a... That sounds pretty good to me. Almost seamless. Next, we're going to move it a little further ahead, around 135, and we're going to hit play to hear what she says. Protest. It was just after the 60s, so there was a group of... We want to take out, it was just after the 60s because we kind of already know that information and we don't need to burn more airtime on that. So we're going to make a cut right after she says there was a protest. Protest. We're going to press Y to add an edit. It was just after the 60s, so... so. Okay, and then we'll press Y to add another edit here after that's done. We're going to select these middle clips we just created. We're going to press the T key to place marks. Then we're going to press the Extract button again. Let's hear how it sounds. Um, protest. There was a group of citizens. Nice. And now, let's move the marker to the first instance of clip 5. We're going to let it play. Many of them have moved and the whole yuppie thing the whole the how wonderful sue stutters on a word for a moment so we're going to correct that but first let's zoom in we want to make it so how wonderful it's happens right after the whole yuppie thing the whole right before she says the here and so we can hold shift and drag the marker right here, right after she finishes enunciating thing. We're going to press the Y key to add an edit. And we can see on the waveforms right where she starts her next line, which is exactly where we want to place our next cut. Let's play it through just to confirm. How wonderful. Perfect. Now let's return the marker to right before the waveforms. I'm going to press the Y key to add another edit. Select the clips in the middle that we just created with our edits. Press the T key to create marks, and then we'll splice that out. Let's hear how it sounds. The whole yuppie thing. How wonderful it's looked. Aw, oh, man. Looks like I cut a little bit too much. But no worries. We could fix that. I just need to restore a little bit of the clip on the right of the cut. So, at the beginning of this clip 5, we're going to place our cursor in the bottom left corner of clip 5 until it's a yellow roller with tape only on the right side. 
This is the ripple trim tool, and it's going to allow us to extend the clip. So, if your cursor looks exactly like mine in the bottom left corner of this clip, just click once. A yellow bar appears on the cut, and then we'll place our cursor in the bottom left corner of the video clip directly above so it looks identical to mine. Hold the Option key or the Shift key to add to the current selection, and then click. With both of these highlighted, we're going to click and drag to the left to extend it just a little bit. Now there's a little bit of breathing room between the words and we can hear that it sounds much more natural. The whole yuppie thing, how wonderful it looks now. Great, but you heard that pop too, right? So I'm going to place the marker right at the edit, click Add Quick Transition, make it a film fade, deselect V1 so that it only applies to A1. It still has the same settings as last time, which is four frames, two frames out. We're going to make the target drive our last name, personal workspace, and then add and render. Anything. How wonderful. Perfect. Smooth as butter. Now there's one important note about editing out filler and splicing together clips from a talking interview. Yuppie thing. How this leaves a jump cut. And this is the absolute last thing that we want in a documentary. It's fine on YouTube and TikTok for vlogs or for expediency, but it will not help an audience immerse into the heart of the story. So, we must tactically cover it up with B-roll, better known as production roll in professional circles, but we're going to save that for the next video. Before that, we have one more edit to make to the sound bed. Let's start by zooming out and finding the location. The next edit is going to be around the beginning of clip 2, right about at the minute mark on our sequence, the part where Sue says, in 1977, as a protest. Um protest. Right there in clip two, she hesitates for a little while before she announces it was a protest, so we're going to cut that down. We're going to find a spot to place an edit. In 1977 as a... Right after she says, as a, we're going to press Y to make an edit. Um, protest. And then right before she says, a protest, I can see the waveforms here, or I can hold shift just to listen. Protest. But we want to be right after that click she makes with their mouth. Ooh, sorry for those that didn't like that sound. <laughs> That's why I'm cutting it out. I'm going to press Y. And then we're going to do the same routine. Select the newly created middle clip. Press T to add markers, and then extract. Let's hear how it sounds. The Dalai started in 1977 as a protest. There was a group of citizens who decided that they... Just about perfect, but let's add a tiny bit of a transition. So I'm going to place the marker right between the two clips we just cut together. Add a quick transition. Make sure it only applies to A1. It's a film fade, but we're going to make this one shorter. This will be two frames. Render it on our personal workspace, and then add and render. Uh, protest. Great job. Now I'm going to zoom out a little more. We're going to move the marker to the beginning. And now let's discuss why we arrange this the way that it is. So let's start with the first part. So those are pretty strong political roots, even though 40 years later, most people don't know that story. In the first clip, we hear about the situation leading up to Dali's inception. This serves as a tease for what's to come, enticing viewers with a mystery. My name is Sue Blau. I am associated with the Dali because in 1976, I moved into the Second Avenue Terrace. I moved to downtown Detroit in the Cass Corridor from Boulder, Colorado, where I was a hippie. Next, 
Sue Blau introduces herself in the second clip, a standard in documentaries. She then describes her relevance to the subject, Dally in the Alley, and even adds some comedy, announcing she was a hippie. These golden moments add life and character to documentaries. The Dally started in 1977 as a protest. There was a group of citizens who decided that they didn't want the buildings torn down. Wayne State was encroaching and had different plans than the Summit City citizens did. So the first dally was to get petitions signed and voters registered. The diversity in the name. After, Sue describes the formation behind dally. So we hear the beginning of a story, creating exposition. She does have a couple of pauses and breaks and if you choose to correct them, you absolutely can. This is an exercise after all, but for the purpose of expediency, we're gonna leave them in. Neighborhood story is important. And I guess the diversity of the community, the hippies, artists, students, hookers, or not so much anymore. I mean, the people who used to live here. That Sue hits an important point which is the importance of diversity in the community. This is the heart, the emotion of the story that every aspect of this documentary should help illustrate. The musicians and the hippies can't afford to live here anymore. And many of them have moved. And the whole yuppie thing, how wonderful it looks now, but how yuppified it is. There's an upside to this neighborhood and how things are preserved and there's a, a shadow side to gentrification and improvement in the community. This leads right into the conflict of the documentary, which is gentrification and how much the community has changed. She uses the word yuppie, which as I just learned is not endearing. The conflict takes place in the present and slightly in the past, but it moves us forward chronologically. And that polarity makes me miss the old and hope that the new is more is inclusive and and keeps the neighborhood feeling but then sue concludes optimistically describing her hope for the future community in cass corridor sending us off after we're moved by a touching story about community in detroit it's important to note that this documentary there's a crafted arc the history is introduced to us, the conflict moves us to the present, and the wishful thinking brings us to the conclusion. There is a beginning, a middle, and an end, which creates a very impactful story told through this documentary. And so hopefully that helped illustrate and maybe inspire you for your future documentary projects. For now though, we're ready to wrap up Avid 4. We're gonna hit Command S, Make sure that everything is good. Then we're gonna hit the X on the top left and leave the application. So the next step we're gonna do is open our Avid Nexus Client Manager again, and we're going to disconnect. After that, we can hit Command Q, and we'll go back to the dock and make sure we don't have any rogue programs running and we are good to go. Congratulations on making it to the end of Avid 4. Thank you for staying for the entire time, and I'll see you in Avid 5.